hey guys uh, welcome back again we, uh, we are here with the uh, new tutorial that is apex source services in source services we will learn how we can enable our apex class to be work as a source services to be uh, we how we can enable how we can generate the visual file of our apex class uh, in the previous tutorial we will learn how we can create uh, apex services how we can create uh, how we can test uh, those services using workbench uh, in both format uh, xml or json how we can write the unit test uh, unit test cases for those class uh, for all uh, all the methods so here uh, in this uh, soap services in the soap uh, soap will always use xml this is there is no use of json format in the soap services and the keyword that uh, used for enabled web services is called as uh, web service Web service is a keyword that we will use uh, next to our uh, Apex method uh, that will enable the Apex class to be used as a uh, web services and uh, th that keyword will also enable our class so that we can generate the visual file of our class. So let's go ahead and uh, create the web services. In this tutorial uh, we will learn how we can create the web service, how we can test using workbench and how we can uh, generate the visual file for that Apex class. So let's go ahead. So first of all, we will create a Apex class that will responsible for creating a uh, book object record because uh, we are using book object in this uh, tutorial series. So let's go ahead. The class must be global uh, to uh, in order to use the web service uh, keyword next to a method. So we will create a global class, and I will name it book book planner you can uh, give it any other name we will create a web service method and as of now we will just use a single parameter to be used as uh, the method and we'll create a book record so here in this method what we are doing we are sorry just here, here, see. there was a typo mistake so in this class we are uh, we have a single method that is named as create book and here in the inside the method what we are doing we are just creating an object of book record assigning the name whatever the name value we will be sending it from the workbench to the name mm, field and then we are just written uh, sorry we are not inserting we need to insert we are inserting the book record and then returning it back to the workbench uh, whatever the third party will be accessing the service so the first uh, now let's test it using workbench uh, the workbench is a tool that we need to go to utility rest explorer now here in the rest explorer you need to use select the soap method we will go to header in the header we need to use because we are using the xml format so we need to use text my xml and car set utf8 except we are accepting only xml format and soap x and just put it as a blank so these are the header parameters that we need to put if you are uh, writing the fs class or if you are uh, using any other scripting language any other programming language we need to put this in our header and uh, this, this body will uh, look like this so let me show you and explain this okay here so body will contains three part one will be 
envelope inside the envelope it will contains three parts sorry about, uh, this will envelope envelope be containing three parts one will be the header part and the other will be the body sorry th this complete will be the three part envelope inside envelope we have header and body so what body will contain body will contains the parameters whatever the parameters whatever the parameter values we wanted to send to salesforce body will complete body will consist of the complete parameters and the values and header he header will contains the parameters that we wanted to send like uh, content type and uh, uh, whatever the we are accepting we are sending like accept soap action uh, and uh, all of the headers and it will also contains the most important parameter that is called a session id so if you won't send the session id to salesforce it will not create any record it will not execute the logic that we are that we have uh, inside ourselves inside our method so we have to send the valid session id we uh, so and in this envelope we have two parameters that is soap envelope and other one is uh, i put it as uh, my name uh, you can use uh, as any anything else so soap envelope will always be schemas dot xml soap dot organization back and forward slash slope slash uh, backslash envelope and in the other parameter excel uh, xml namespace schema whatever uh, you wanted to put it this will contains this part and this part will be same till class http soap s dot com schema then class and here this will be the part of this will be the name of the account sorry this will be the name of the class so in our case <coughs> let's use this in our example in our case the class name is book planner so we will be replacing insert account with the our class name book planner we will also replace this class name or here in the session id we need to use the valid session id so for session id i have created a vfps that is get session id vf inside the VA page you don't need to do anything just put sorry let me edit it you you need to just put api dot session underscore id that's it it will give you the session id and then copy this session id paste that session id place of the in this okay so here in this place of uh, session id so uh, yeah this this one whatever the variable name you are using here like i am using amit so you have to use this particular thing all over the envelope all over whatever like if you are using session header if you are using soap envelope header session header we are sorry we are using the method name we are using the variable name inside the method so we have to use all over this so now uh, we are we have done with the session header we are we put the session id what we need to do this create account plan this is the name of method name so we need to replace this with our method name that is create book start of the method and end of the method inside that this is the parameter like as of now we are sending only single parameter that is name so we need to copy the name the parameter name as it is we need to put over here if you if you are sending more than one parameters then we can uh, put uh, um, parameters and uh, the other parameters like this
whatever parameters we are sending so as of now we are not sending any other parameters so we don't need that so now let's test click on execute and see if you are able to execute here you can see that 200 we are getting 200 response as a okay so we are able to we are successfully able to create a book record you can see here in the response xml version whatever we are getting we are getting the id and we are able to name insert account name so just copy the id oh, back to the salesos org you can see that the name of the book is insert account name so uh, this is the way we can create our apex soap services we can test using workbench services this is the soap that indicates that yes uh, uh, we are going to use a soap services we are going to test soap services here class that indicates uh, we are go going to use a class that has a web service static method uh, yeah, uh, there is uh, one thing that I would like to tell. If your class, if your organization, if your Salesforce org has a namespace, you are using a namespace. You need to put namespace before the class name and the both both places over here as well. After the, after the class, you need to put the namespace as well. So if you are using the namespace and uh, if your org has namespace and you are not using the namespace uh, it will not uh, it will you will get an error so to resolve that error you have to use the namespace over here before the class name the both places the xml namespace schema as well and over here in the url as well so uh, next what we will do like uh, in the book object we have uh, more fields uh, like author we have for the price we also have so all these three fields we are going to use using a wrapper class so we will create a new class new global class uh, why we are using the global class class as a global uh, because after generating the digital file uh, any third party system will be using our class to create the book record over here in my in this salesforce org so that they can use our class uh, they can use our class variables they can use our parameters they can use our methods without any problem so that we are using the global and uh, we are using global as a uh, for the our classes so to use the method to use the wrapper class uh, variable sorry to use the wrapper class variable inside our the service method variable must be declared as a web service web service Assign book name author so now we will use and we'll return this particular wrapper class
Yes. And now we got it. So as we have created the wrapper class as a book plan and now we are using the book plan as a parameter inside our method create book. So we need to modify our body that we are sending from the workbench. So let's see how we can modify this uh, using the body. So let's expand it. This is the method that we are using. Inside the method what we are using, we are using a variable of a wrapper class type. Now, a variable that is a type of wrapper class. So we need to use the variable inside that. Inside the method we need to use now inside this method inside uh, this is this variable is of wrapper class and this wrapper class is containing different different type of parameters so inside this parameters we need to put our all the methods for example like name we can put it as Einstein boards but we need to change the name because we are using a different name over here so name it as a name for the price Let's put it for ninety dollars. And we have one other parameter that is author. So as author is a look of field or the book object, so we need to give the ID of particular user. So let's take the ID of a user. Oops. Let's take it and the sales user. Put here. So before we execute, before we test this, this service, I would like to make a small t uh, tweak over the class. So here we are inserting the plan. So whatever th the data we are sending from the workbench, we are just returning that is. So I'd like to add one more field that is called as ID book ID, and we will return that field as well as so so after inserting the record now now we are returning this one so what it will do it will insert the book record it will add the book ID to this parameter the wrapper class and then it will return to us so now let's test it click on execute we are getting an error we are getting server 500 internal server error and we are getting the prefix for element is not bound so let's uh, test it what's the error why we are getting the error okay so here in the prefix prefix is uh, a myth we are using apex so this is why we are getting the error now let's execute it yeah that was that was the problem causing the problem so here is you can see that we are able to see 
200 as a response and ok as a status um, status message and here in the status message if you see we are able to get the response result as a author whatever we are sending book id that the id we are getting from the uh, web service class the name of book the price so if you want to see the book record either it has been successfully created or not here you can see the book name author price whatever we are sending from the workbench whatever we are sending from the workbench we are able to get here using the apex web service so this is hot how we can develop the web service using the apex web service keyword uh, static keyword method and this is uh, the way that we can test the web service using our uh, workbench there is another way to create a web service in a uh, thing in uh, other salesforce org and test the web service in another salesforce org so we will see that as well uh, in our next tutorial so uh, as of now just let's see how we can generate the wsdl how we can generate the visual file of our apex class after saving the record you will see the button uh, enabled as called as generate visual so for the uh, if you wanted to see for the other normal classes this option must be disabled so let's see for other normal classes for example metadata service that class is very big so the option for generating the WSDL file is not over here so whenever we will be choosing web service keyword next to our method in our class we will get a new button enabled that is called as generate WSDL file if you will click on that button we will get the visual file for that uh, uh, for our class here you can see the target name space whatever the name space that we are using in our workbench if you copy and want to validate this space it is you will get that particular URL over here so th this is this is how we can create soap services we can test using workbench we can generate now you can save this file as a XML file if you wanted to save it in here just save it over here as uh, this is a visual file we need to generate we need to save as a visual file we are able to save it now you can use this visual file inside another salesforce org to generate the class and then you can uh, we can you can test the same using the code so thank you for watching the video please do provide your feedback the comment section if you have any question if you uh, have any problems then please contact you can contact me if i using my twitter handle or you can email me on my email id thank you thank you guys for watching the video